Thank you, uh, and good morning. Uh, I want to start with just a 30-second pitch on BHEF and get into some very uh, interesting uh, conversation with, with Kathy. Um, we are a 40-year-old membership organization of corporate CEOs like Wes Bush, the chairman and CEO of Northrop Grumman, uh, and university presidents like Wayne, um, who come together to uh, develop new talent uh, pipelines, pathways uh, in uh, high-skilled, high-demand fields like cybersecurity, data science, and analytics, AI, and others. Um, these programs are really uh, built on uh, deep and sustainable partnerships that we're going to talk about uh, today. Uh, we do this work through the National Higher Ed and Workforce Initiative. Uh, that and the partnership with, with Northrop was the first program in cybersecurity with the University System of Maryland at College Park and, and uh, UMBC. Um, we have uh, helped develop uh, nearly 50 different programs across the country with our members, and we want to talk about uh, the, the partnership in cybersecurity today. So uh, one of the um, themes we hear from virtually every employer and it seems that the, the, the greater the talent shortage, the greater the, the focus is really on diversity. Um, can you give us some idea about what you're doing in, on the diversity side? Yes, I mentioned diversity because as you've heard from some of the earlier panels, this is an area that's very important to being able to get the number of skilled people in the field that we need. When you look at the diversity, we're thinking not just about diversity of gender and race, we are thinking about diversity of thought, education, experience, and what forms people's ability to think critically and add to innovation. Because it's innovation that then is the engine for success and performance. So when we think about that, the first dimension is making sure that we have the appropriate representation. And you've heard some of the panelists speak about women in particular. Most STEM programs today have about 11 or 12% participation by females. In cybersecurity, the programs that we are launching have an emphasis on bringing females into the cyber profession, and we're running in the 23 to 25%. So that still may seem light, but it's more than double the average of normal STEM programs that don't emphasize access for women into the We also think about this as an imperative. If you're only accessing 10 to 15% of the female population that is available to work in this discipline, we're missing out. And so we need to get the numbers because that diversity is what will generate the ideas that make us all better. As we've looked at programs to help with this, we've found that most people self-select out of STEM fields by middle school. So if we want to get women and we want to get underserved communities seeing themselves as having a pathway into STEM fields, we have to start. We have two programs, one that operates at the preschool level in coordination with the Wolf Trap Foundation. It is an institute of education within Wolf Trap that services schools in helping to make STEM, particularly science and math at the preschool level, interesting through the arts. And this is showing great results in terms of getting students who wouldn't normally see themselves as being able to excel in math and science to have a greater interest level and perform better in testing. The other thing that we have focused on is at the middle and high school level, helping students who are interested in science and math see how that can be applied into cybersecurity. So we have the Cyber Patriot program that we work in partnership with the Air Force Association. This program in nine years has grown from eight teams across the nation that have competed in a cybersecurity competition. And now it's 4,400. So the interest at the middle and high school level has been phenomenal in this program. And it has really given us an ability to show young people how studying math and science can be utilized in a field dynamic and interesting. So these are just a few of the things that we're doing to make sure that we have programs at all levels to generate the workforce of the future in cyber. Thank you, Kathy. You know, uh, this all started uh, at, a, at a, uh, a meeting on President's Day in 2012 
uh, with BHEF Northrop and the University of Maryland system. And I remember very vividly uh, that one of the comments uh, one of your staff made is that when those students for Cyber Patriots say, wow, this is really great, I want to study this, where can I go to school to study it? There was really no place. And I wonder if you can talk about Northrop's role in building career pathways for those cyber interested students. Yes, yeah, so as I said, it doesn't stop there. Once a student expresses interest, we need to make sure that there is a way for a lifelong of learning in this field. And the program that Brian mentioned that we partnered with the University of Maryland to create was an accelerated cyber experience uh, environment where students can choose to study in a discipline of their choice, but also study cybersecurity at the same time. This program's been very successful. It has created an opportunity for now several hundred students to participate in the program. And we recognize that even when those students with that learning come into our environment, the second step is making sure that we have laid out appropriate career advancement guides for them. So we have a career advancement structure that lays out particular disciplines within cybersecurity, whether those be forensics, malware extraction, hacking, ethical hacking, of course. These are all experiences that people want to know, how do I knit those together into a lifelong career in cybersecurity? And then the final piece is making sure that within our structure, people are able to go get the ongoing learning that they need. We partner often with academia to bring those professional skills back into the workforce through not only digital learning, but also cohorts and classroom training that supplements our people's skill. Because this is an area where you don't go to university, come out, and think that you've learned everything that you need to know. You will continue to need to learn and hone skills over a lifetime and continuing to create those educational programs with academia that support those of us in industry who employ cybersecurity professionals is an important part of our strategy as well. So lightning round question, we have 45 seconds. What should industry in, as a group be doing to address these issues? I mentioned we need to all be in this together. I talked about several of the programs that Northrop Grumman supports, but I also talked about that two million person shortfall. So we have to galvanize as industry thinking about this problem as a problem not only for our company, but for our society. At Northrop, we work on some of the most important national security issues, and cybersecurity is foremost among them. We need the talent in this country to be able to support those missions. And the way that we do that is thinking responsibly about the role of industry in creating that pipeline of talent for the future. Thank you.